And then it is just my just complete honor to introduce Dr. Peggy Chen. Um, I have known Dr. Chen for, oh, I guess I've been editing the journal, Peggy, for 20 years. So probably met you at the first um, editor's meeting that I went at. Um, Dr. Chen is the founding editor for Advances in Nursing Science which I am sure you guys have already or will be reading some required readings and articles from that journal. Um, Dr. Chen is a living legend and a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. Um, she has authored numerous books and journal articles. Um, she is a renowned nursing theorist, and as I've told you guys before, I'm a nursing a theory nerd. I love, love theory. She's the co-founder and the web manager for the Nurse Manifest Project, and also the co-founder and the web manager for Nurseology, which is centered around nursing theory, and um, she'll be be talking about that today. Um, what's fun is Dr. Chen actually spent a lot, a lot of her childhood summers in Johnson City. She had, I think, an aunt that lived there, um, actually in Tree Street's neighborhood, which is where my daughter had an apartment when she was in grad school. And I think we probably got some students and faculty living in that area now. So, um, so she has a, a fond memory and um, attraction towards Johnson City and um, Eastern Tennessee. So Peggy, take it away. We're just so happy to have you. Oh, thank you so much. Actually, um, the quilt that's hanging on the wall in back of me is the quilt that was made by my, my aunt, my Aunt Betty Pence, who lived on Maple Street. And I went to visit her one time when my mother was there and told her I wanted to go out into the towns around Johnson City and look for quilts and dulcimers. And actually there's dulcimers hanging on the wall in back of me too. So we went, at, my aunt said, well, I have two tops that I have pieced, but I've never quilt, quilted them. If you want them, you can have them. And this was one of them. Uh, the, uh, the patterned fabric on the Dresden plates um, were dresses that they wore when they were young girls growing up in Johnson City <laughs> in the early 1900s. So um, I do have really fond uh, memories. This, uh, the top for the quilt in back of me stayed in my Aunt Betty's uh, closet for many years. Uh, she actually put it together in 1935 and she had put it away and never had it quilted. Uh, so it was living on Maple Street in Johnson City <laughs> until I claimed it in about 19, 99 or something like that. <laughs> so I'm really delighted to be here with all of you. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen uh, to uh, get started with uh, my presentation. And um, okay, I trust everybody can see this. Um, basically, uh, I'm going to focus on not only the website nurseology.net, uh, which you see the very simple URL uh, down here in the bottom, uh, and you can visit it anytime. I'm going to put up a link, uh, or I'll send Valerie a link to these slides as well, because there are a lot of links in the slides that later you can go through and uh, uh, click on and go to the, what, this, uh, what the original, um, uh, uh, what the link is, is leading to. Now, now okay. <laughs> okay, the history of the website. Um, in, ab in about 2015-16, uh, a large group of us, many of whom are, are pictured here, uh, had become very concerned with the fact that many nursing programs around the country were either reducing or deleting altogether any content related to nursing theory. And uh, there's a lot of um, uh, factors that fed into that, but we, we believed that it was really 
a travesty and that uh, we were also aware that if you searched on the website for any nurse theorist by name, you were likely to come up with student PowerPoint slides. <laughs> and there was no website and there's nothing wrong with student PowerPoint slides, but uh, there was no, no indication of how accurate the information was, sometimes not even good information about the sources that they used. So we decided that it was time to change this and to get something on the web that really gave nursing theory and all of the philosophy uh, events that were happening uh, a very um, visible presence. I don't have the names here of everybody that's in this picture, but this is Sister Calista Roy. Um, this is Joyce Fitzpatrick from Case Western Reserve University. Um, I'm kind of, uh, this is Elizabeth Barrett, uh, whose theory of uh, um, knowing, uh, intentionally knowing uh, in, uh, as a health process, I'm blocking the terminology. This is Jackie Fawcett, who is the uh, leader of our management team for the site. Um, and uh, there's several other people that I could name in this uh, picture, but uh, this is Mar Marlene Smith, who just uh, stepped down from the deanship at Florida Atlantic University. So we conceived the website to remedy the growing neglect and devaluing of nursing knowledge um, and to shift the drift away from nursing's values and properties shift it to a clear grounding in our own discipline. And this is one of the things that I'm very passionate about because of several things that I've been involved in lately that I will be talking about that demonstrates that even though we have a rich uh, heritage of theory and knowledge development and values in nursing, uh, we tend to look to other disciplines uh, as the expert uh, sources in uh, related to whatever we are doing. Um, and that's been a long time kind of uh, uh, persistent uh, thing that has happened in nursing. I know in my own undergraduate nursing education in, in the early 60s at, at the University of Hawaii, uh, we were told never to, to cite a nursing source because the nursing sources were all secondary sources. <laughs> and I know that not everybody has had that uh, background in terms of their education, but it was very explicit in mine. And the fact that uh, people do tend to look to other disciplines is further evidence of kind of a devaluing. Um, we wanted the website to provide inspiration for the future development of nursing knowledge that's grounded in the uh, underlying uh, commitments of, of our discipline. And there's a link here to the detailed mission of the site uh, that you can uh, click on when you get the slides, the link to the slides. These are Google Slides, and so they're easy to get to. Um, the, uh, we also developed at the same time a, an annual nursing theory conference. Not only were we concerned about the fact that theory courses were being dropped, but that uh, the, uh, the last general nursing theory knowledge development conference that we were aware of when we started this, being we collectively, uh, were a couple of conferences in the early, uh, well, in the 1990s and early 2000s held in Boston uh, that uh, focused on uh, nursing theory development and nursing knowledge. Uh, we were shocked when we actually got into developing the website that we were wrong, that there have been several groups uh, dedicated to nursing theory who were meeting regularly, but they were groups dedicated to a particular theoretical line of uh, thought, like the King Group uh, that held this conference in November of 2019, uh, and um, the uh, uh, different things that have happened uh, with uh, the caring, uh, there's a, a couple of different groups that are focused on human caring. Um, most of those are not dedicated to a particular nursing caring theory, but uh, they are more broadly concerned with caring. Uh, there's a very active group that follows Sister, Clear's, Sister Calista Roy's 
theory and develops research and education and practice based on that theory. Um, at the Case Western Reserve Conference in 2019, when we really decided to develop this as an annual thing, um, uh, we had, uh, I gave the keynote address, which you can download from neurosology.net. There's a link to it here uh, that really talks about the uh, fact of uh, how, what are the barriers to our continuing to drift away from nursing's knowledge. A group of students, there were about 50 doctoral students at the Case Western Conference, and they formed a nursology theory collective that is very active. In fact, I think that they are meeting today um, on Zoom uh, in the afternoon. Um, and there's information about how you can join uh, if you go to this uh, link. Uh, the King Collaborative Conference happened in November of 2019, and many of the people who were at the Case Western Reserve also went to this conference, and uh, we really decided to develop an annual conference team. So unfortunately, the second annual nursing theory conference was planned for uh, Memphis in uh, March of 2020, and we all know what happened after that. <laughs> uh, we had to cancel the conference. We postponed it. Uh, we are going to have a virtual conference in March of uh, this coming year, uh, and then in 2021, we will go, I mean, uh, in 2022, we'll try to convene in Memphis again, where they have established an endowed chair for Margaret Newman, um, and so we're planning to go there uh, for the uh, but the first time that we can get together in person. So when we decided to really uh, look into getting on um, putting content on the website, we discovered that nursing theory is alive and well, but it's hidden from view. Um, this slide is just a little bit outdated. I think we're approaching 54 theories and models currently posted. Um, and um, that actually shocked all of us who were involved, and we were all of us who were involved considered ourselves nursing theory scholars. <laughs> but we had really lost sight of the vast variety and the vast uh, scope of theoretical ideas that have been developed in nursing over the years. Many of them, many of these 53 or 54 uh, theories and models have been published um, in the last five years. So uh, to keep up with uh, what's happening is really uh, quite, a, quite an undertaking. And we're just so thrilled that we have this uh, resource now where people can uh, put word out and have their work um, counted among uh, the many theoretical ideas that are so pertinent to what we are concerned with in nursing. Um, th these are the two, I guess, characteristics that universally we find in all of the theories and models uh, that are considered to be nursing theories. Uh, usually they are contextualized perspectives on health, not disease, meaning that uh, typically uh, nurses tend to <clears throat> look at the whole picture um, of, of what's really going on with this? And how does this particular phenomenon that I'm concerned about um, fit into the large picture of people being able to maintain and achieve health and wellness <clears throat> and recovery? Um, there's also a strong focus on nursing as facilitating he healing, not prescribing of treatment. Uh, and so, <clears throat> um, this is one of the characteristics that is really uh, very prominent. Um, many theories focus on a particular phenomenon, uh, but they do not typically, if they, in other disciplines, uh, they're, they're typically not looking at uh, moving toward a, a, a space of health and wellness and how that, uh, how that movement, which is facilitating healing, actually occurs. So the website, when we, when we really got down to doing it, we thought, oh, let's have a repository of theories. <laughs> and uh, the first three or four months that I started sharing the website after we launched it in September of 2018, um, a friend of mine uh, looked at it um, overnight and she, uh, 
I saw her the next day and she said, Peggy, this is more than a website. It's an experience. <laughs> and it really is. You can get lost in this website for uh, several hours, really, uh, just um, exploring what all is there. The main menu and all the sub menus give you uh, the scope of what we're covering. Uh, you'll find that the um, we have a whole main menu item on exemplars of the application of nursing theory um, in research, practice, education, policy, and quality improvement. Um, and th this is an area that we uh, hope will be much better developed as we go along. There's at least uh, two or three exemplars on, in each of the categories, but we want to have a much larger um, uh, list of exemplars as we go through it, and we're adding to them all the time. Uh, the galleries uh, that are there, uh, there's galleries that show you all of the authors of the nursing theories, along with their photos, um, and a little bit of information about who they are which we felt, felt was really what was missing when you just go to some source and read a theory, um, knowing who it, where it came from, we believe is very important. Um, the sidebar features, you can follow the site and get an email notice of all of our new blog posts. We have a blog post at least every Tuesday, and uh, sometimes we insert one um, toward the end of the week um, if there's something that we need to uh, get posted that's very um, uh, pertinent to what is happening right now. Um, <clears throat> there's a sidebar uh, where you can look, uh, find out how to contribute to the blog, which we're really eager for people to do. And you'll, you'll see several times that we have blog posts that are written by uh, nursing students. Um, we have a list of the notable resources that we've developed in the, since we started the site. Um, and then due dates. Um, <clears throat> this is not as pertinent right now because all of the conferences and <laughs> events had to be postponed or canceled. <clears throat> but um, there are a few. There's a couple uh, uh, abstracts due for particular conferences, registration, Ordinarily, when we get back to being able to gather in person, you'll see due dates for registering for conferences and information about where and how that happens. Um, and <clears throat> there's a couple of due dates for uh, applying for scholarships that are related to uh, the nursing theory and knowledge development. So people often want to know why the term nursology? Um, it actually dates from the early 1970s, and uh, the <clears throat> person that gives one of the best ex explanations of the importance of this term is Pamela Reed, who is shown here. She's at the University of Arizona, <clears throat> and uh, she, she talks about the fact that uh, no other discipline is labeled by, with a verb, which nursing is. Uh, and so uh, we were, she, she, there's a uh, some merit in moving to a label for a, a, a discipline that refers to uh, the, the discipline as a noun. Um, and the, the term nursology uh, includes the suffix that's very common in other disciplines, biology, psychology, et cetera, et cetera, meaning study, the science, and the theory of. And <clears throat> to us, it was important to recognize that nursing is indeed a science and that we have theories of and uh, nursing requires knowledge that is specific to the discipline. These two women at the top are Loretta uh, uh, Joe Patterson and Loretta Stirad, and they um, were uh, a nurseologist. They had that as their formal title at a VA hospital somewhere in the Northeast. And uh, they, they also have a, a, a theory of humanistic nursing. And they, their position at a VA hospital was as nurse researchers. And they uh, uh, had the formal title of, the, of, of nurseologists. Jackie Fawcett also has written quite a bit about um, 
the term and why it's important and why we should use it. She's one of the most avid advocates of just changing the name <laughs> of our discipline, which I think is going to be a slow evolutionary process, but Jackie's ready to do it right now. Um, and at the end of these slides, I have a, a link to, to the writings of these and other people who have talked about the term nursology. It's more than just an academic exercise, and this is something that distinguishes nursing as a discipline from many other disciplines, uh, because our discipline is um, shaped, uh, is focused on action, shaping action. And we're a practice discipline, so we have uh, a close connection that uh, we're always seeking to even strengthen even more. Uh, the connection between what we know and what we do, and learning to really embrace the idea uh, that we know what we do and we do what we know. Um, it, our discipline has a unique point of view. We have a unique ethic that has been written about in the nursing literature. The nursing ethic is really focused around relationships and the uh, value and the um, imperative to be with, to stay with, to know uh, the person. Um, and um, it's uh, the, uh, look, Sturet, uh, Patterson and Sturet, uh their humanistic nursing theory is one that really drives this point home. Um, our discipline tends to bring uh, awareness to factors uh, that would other, are otherwise ignored. And I think that this is one of the things that uh, really contributes to <clears throat> the frustration that many nurses have with situations they find themselves in. Where lots of things are being uh, attended to, but there's important vital issues that are ignored or overlooked and that we keep wanting to bring to the forefront, but we have to struggle to do so. So when we do that, we make a demonstrable difference. We make a difference in people's lives. Um, it's part of what um, uh, we are, um, as a discipline, recognized for in terms of <clears throat> our trustworthiness <clears throat> and <clears throat> the uh, fact that if, um, if anybody is going to be on the side of, a, uh, uh, of the person who is going through an, a health experience or crisis, uh, a nurse will be the person who is likely to be there for them. There, is, there are strong intersections with other disciplines, and I don't want to diminish that because we, what we have drawn from other disciplines is really very important, but it's not enough. Um, we have to also bring the, the insights from other disciplines into the context of our own discipline and include uh, what Margaret Newman, Simon Corcoran Perry said was, in, was vital if, if we were to call what we are doing nursing. Uh, they say a body of knowledge that does not include caring and human experience is not nursing knowledge. <clears throat> so in addition to the theories, a discipline requires understanding an honored disciplinary history that demonstrates relevance, the importance of thought leaders and nurturing of early career scholars, journals, books, and web resources of the discipline, organizations, conferences, and other opportunities for interdisciplinary networking. Now, you'll, you'll find that all of these are reflected on the nurseology.net website as I go through some of the details of it here and talk about why this is so important. It's not just a tour <laughs> of the website. It's really why are we focusing on all of these things um, in such a deliberate and uh, intentional way. The disciplinary history. We, we knew that the, uh, <clears throat> the, there were two or three events that really launched a disciplinary collective focus on developing nursing theory. And they were held in 1968, 69, and 70 um, at the Colorado, the University of Colorado in Denver, 
one of them was, and two of them at Case Western Reserve in uh, Cleveland. And those conferences all generated pub what we now know of as published articles, many of which were published in the literature in the early 70s. Probably the most well-known of them uh, are the articles by, uh, um, <laughs> now I'm blocking on the, the name, but um, the early practice-oriented theory articles um, that were appeared in nurse, the journal Nursing Research. And um, <clears throat> the uh, it, uh, Wiedenbach was one of the art, uh, authors, the nurse Wiedenbach, and the other two authors were not nurses, but they were working closely with nursing nurses to help develop the foundation for what we would be pursuing um, in developing nursing knowledge. <clears throat> so these three uh, landmark events, plus many others that were then held in the early 70s and into the 80s, um, were uh, very important to the development of the discipline to be able to create visions of the future, to discuss ideas. Uh, they produced uh, proceedings and published articles. And typically there were 50 or more participants, many of them the students at the time, because this was also the period of time in which doctoral programs in nursing were just first beginning to be, to be developed. Um, and many of the early nursing leaders uh, obtained their doctoral degrees in disciplines other than nursing. Uh, Madeline Leinegger was an art, uh, anthropologist as well. Uh, and um, the, uh, uh, her, her theory of transcultural nursing is widely used today. Uh, but she was quite a, a mover and a shaker to get uh, started with the work that needed to be done to develop nursing knowledge. Uh, but by the way, that's one of the uh, sections in the uh, history section. We have a listing of all of the land, all of the events related to nursing theory that occurred from those early events all the way through the, the founding of nurseology.net. And then we have a new section that started a new listing <laughs> of theory events that have, are happening from 2018 on. And uh, with, with a with a page for each of the uh, each of the events on the website, where you can find links to papers that were pr uh, produced, the uh, proceedings, you'll find a listing of people who attend, at least the listing of the speakers, sometimes people who attended the conference, and attachments uh, with pictures. Um, uh, we're now beginning to collect short videos that happen at each of the conference conferences, and uh, you can just really spend a lot of time exploring this history if you're so inclined to do so. Demonstrated relevance. These are, these are the sections, the exemplar sections on the website. And when you get the slides, uh, you can click on each of those, these and go, go to uh, each of these where you, you, you see exam, ex, examples exemplars of how people have used nursing theory, how nursing theory has shaped each of these areas of involvement that nursing, nurses are in. Um, and you can also go, just go to the website and you'll see on the main menu uh, the, uh, each of these sections listed. Thought leaders nurturing early career scholars. Um, we have uh, students and early career scholars uh, contributing to the Nurseology.net blog. You will see that happening over and over again. And I know that we have about two on the schedule for this month and September that were, written, were contributed by nursing doctoral students. Um, we have students and um, early career scholars on the management team uh, so that uh, we are uh, working closely with uh, uh, scholars who are just starting their career and uh, helping them to be involved and, and, and they are helping us to keep our perspective, us being the old fogies like me, myself, <laughs> uh, keeping us focused on the future and uh, not simply uh, um, looking at the past. 
uh, because we, we do want to honor our history. We do want to acknowledge the importance of what has happened in the past, but we also want to bring a critical eye to what we have done in the past, examine where, how the past can inform our um, moving forward. <clears throat> um, the, uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, Chloe Lidson, who is finishing her dissertation at the University of Arizona, uh, is um, working closely with Pamela Reed, and she and Pamela Reed are developing pages that will focus specifically on nursing philosophy. Uh, right now, it's kind of grouped in with theories and models. Uh, we do have a, a few things that are specific to nursing philosophy, uh, but they're developing a section on the site, and you'll see that pop up here in about three weeks, I think. Uh, where the, we will have a dedicated section with a main menu item where you can go directly to information about philosophy. And <clears throat> we are really uh, uh, helping uh, the students to also be engaged with all of the conferences, which is uh, really, uh, uh, we were so thrilled when we found that that was actually uh, not only uh, that students wanted to do this, but they were eager to do it and have a network. A net, they have 150 people in the Nursology Theory Collective, which is mostly students and early career scholars who are uh, dedicated to really exploring all of the issues around uh, the importance of nursing theory. The journals and books and web resources we now have in nursing over 250 vetted nursing journals, meaning journal, nursing journals that are credible. Um, we have a lot of information about predatory journals, and if any of you are interested in uh, learning more about it, I can send information uh, that um, it will give you, and also Valerie, I'm sure, has a lot of information about this, <clears throat> because we're very concerned that we know the quality of the journals that are being uh, published in nursing. Of those 250, I mean, there are at least 24 focused primarily on nursing knowledge and knowledge development, and we list all of these on the nurseology.net website so you can see uh, which journals they are. Uh, go to a link to the journal websites to find out more about what they publish and how you can publish in those journals. There are at least two dozen texts devoted to nursing knowledge development. <clears throat> You're probably using at least one, maybe more of them. <laughs> and then uh, Sigma Theta Ta has a Virginia Henderson Global Nursing e-repository where they're keeping a repository of a lot of information like dis dissertations in nursing um, and things of that sort. Networking, opportunities for doing this. There's 12 nursing theory organizations um, in 2019, each of these organizations had an event, uh, which before we were started working on the website, we each of us knew vaguely about one or two of them. And most of us were involved with at least one, some of us two of them, but we had no, there was not a good quick picture of the vast uh, d diversity and all of the things that were actually happening. 12 doesn't seem like a lot, but it really is a lot when you consider that these are all of the organizations focused solely on nursing theory and nursing knowledge. Um, we have, of course, hundreds of other nursing organizations focused on nursing specialties or uh, political action, but uh, these are 12 nursing theory organizations. For 2020, <clears throat> there were at least 12 events pl planned um, but it, all of them are being rescheduled, and we do have information about uh, the rescheduling plans. Uh, for some of them, we don't have specific information, but there's a link to their pages so that you can kind of see what, where are they with getting things up and running again when, when the time uh, comes for us to do that. And then there's key nursing blogs, which um, I recommend that everybody participate in at least one. Um, the, of course, nurseology.net is one that is important. Uh, Nurse Manifest, um, as uh, Valerie mentioned, is also a, um, a, 
an important blog. It's more focused on activism. So if you're interested in activism, that's one to follow. And then there's a number of others that you'll find in your, um, in your specialty area. There's some excellent blogs uh, that are written uh, regularly by uh, practicing nurses. Um, and when you start exploring what, what is out there, uh, you'll find a lot of options to choose from. I follow uh, one blog, I think I, I, I have a link to it here later, that is written specifically for PhD students and how to write and, and go through your program in the most productive way possible. Um, and it's written by a professor in um, Great, Great Britain, I believe, uh, Pat Thompson. <clears throat> and the site is called Patter. I'm sure I have a link to that here. It will, it will be coming up. And then take advantage of local opportunities or even regional opportunities. Um, I know that when we're able to gather again for the Nursing Theory Conference, uh, we will be in Memphis. I know that's a long way across the state of Tennessee, <laughs> but watch for it and plan to join us if you can. Um, so what does this all mean for you as a doctoral student or somebody going through uh, starting a career in nursing scholarship? There's these four things, questions that I think that you need to really um, answer for yourself. What truly is your disciplinary focus? If you're getting your degree in nursing, and that implies that your disciplinary focus is in nursing, uh, but some t I think all too often people get into a disciplinary focus that's in another field, education, psychology, sociology, um, public health, um, all of which are excellent disciplines. But if you're focused on that discipline, my feeling is you need to get shift your uh, program into that discipline uh, because the purpose of doctoral education is to really help you become a significant contributor to that discipline. And so if your disciplinary focus is nursing, then knowing about what that focus really means and how that affects your, your work and what you're going to do um, is really vital. Um, in my own teaching, I recommend that if students are using a theory that is not, has not originated in nursing, that they develop a framework in which that theory is a component, but they also show how their disciplinary focus in nursing is uh, shaping and influencing and helping to build uh, their particular uh, research focus. The next question, what is your perspective related to nursing as a discipline? Um, so what do you believe is really the defining elements, the defining forces from nursing that really give you the motivation to do the work that you are doing? Why are you really, as a nurse, concerned with the phenomenon that you're going to be exploring? And what does that perspective really bring to your work that makes it uh, specific to the nursing discipline? And where is your research interest situated in relation to the focus of the discipline? Um, all of this really helps you to clarify your disciplinary focus, but um, are, is your research interest situated in um, acute care, community health? Is it situated um, in terms of uh, a more general, uh, <clears throat> specific kind of interaction? Are you focused on uh, not just the individuals, but the family? Uh, what are the, the things that really, uh, <clears throat> that really form your, your particular focus and how does it uh, fit within nursing? And then how will your work advance the discipline of nursing? <clears throat> uh, kind of think about five years from now, 10 years from now, you've published your articles. What do you hope will happen as a result of the work that you do today? <clears throat> So this is reiterating again uh, my message uh, to ground your work firmly in nursology, the discipline of nursing. Um, this is kind of describing a little bit about the conceptual framework that you might develop, which may include 
of theories and ideas from other disciplines, but brings to the center um, and pulls into focus exactly why this is important for the discipline of nursing. <clears throat> your theoretical framework will also uh, lead to meanings that are beyond the limits of your single study. So uh, this is one of the things that are, uh, that's really important about theory, um, even situation specific theory, uh, which is very specific to a particular population and particular experience. Uh, but it, theories and research findings are meant to move our understanding beyond just one study or one situation. So how do you connect with your Nursology commu community? Of course, Nursology.net. Uh, join or tune into the Nursology Theory Collective. Um, and we were uh, still, um, I've, I forgot since I first developed this slide, to indicate that the Nursing Theory Conference will, in 2021, uh, uh, will be a virtual conference, so everybody can do it. <laughs> and we're, uh, we have a, a, everything from 2020 has kind of been shifted to 2021. So we have the program, we had uh, 73 abstracts for breakout sections, and all of those will then be online in 2021. And then we, of course, will update and uh, uh, refresh the 2020 planning for 2021, but it will be happening, just not in Memphis. Uh, yet, but it will be online. And then connect with other Nurseology conferences, organizations, and individuals. And you can probably find something on Nurseology.net related to other conferences or organizations, and certainly with the people that have been involved. And following the blog is really important to really connect with individual people because authors of these blogs are really um, eager uh, to have interaction, uh, to hear from you, uh, to know what th you think about their ideas, um, to add your thoughts, uh, sometimes your, re your resources to what, is, uh, what, what you find on their blog post. Here's the references related to the term nursology. Uh, Patterson, and, uh, Patterson is really the author of this, but all of her work was really tied in with um, Loretta Sturad as well. Uh, Pamela Reed's articles. And then uh, this one I didn't mention, but it is an important 1976 article uh, that was published in the Journal of Advanced Nursing on the term uh, <coughs> nursology, using the term nursology. And it's really an interesting article. <coughs> uh, then Jackie Fawcett's work where they uh, talk about the name of the discipline specifically. So, your questions. I'm going to quit sharing. Let you contemplate this little question mark for a minute. <laughs> and I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I'm not sure where we are time-wise, but um, I'll trust Valerie to help us monitor that. Let's see, Valerie. Hey, you're, you're sorry, I'm muted. Sorry, we're great on time, I think. Okay, um, great. The next session, I've got trying to pull up my word file here, is we've got to 1.30, so we are great on time. Okay. Um, now, there's one question I'm seeing in the chat box from Katie Langley. Um, oh, she was asking about the activism blog that you referenced. So, um, oh, great. Let me share my screen again, and I'll, I'll pull up that website. Okay. Thank you. This is really uh, an important uh, resource right now because just yesterday, let me see, now you get to watch me go through all of my little, <laughs> uh, ah, come on, there's manifest, I know you're here. I'm just gonna have to do it. We're, we are, uh, if I can type here. nursemanifest.com. This uh, website was launched in 2002 <clears throat> when I was still doing websites using HTML and CSS. <laughs> For those of you who know a little bit of uh, <clears throat> jargon around doing websites. 
<laughs> uh, but uh, we we have had quite a number of posts related to COVID-19, uh, but uh, then of course starting uh, in the last couple of months with a concern. This, this website does not have a regular schedule for posts and sometimes we go for weeks without much coming up on it. <clears throat> but you can subscribe. Um, and uh, this is the post that was uh, just published uh, two days ago. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a series of web discussions, an overdue reckoning on racism and nursing. And uh, this blog post uh, just basically tells about it. And with the link, you can go to the, uh, to the page about the series and what it's all about, uh, when it's happening, who, who can, who's invited to attend, how you get connected. Uh, we, are, we have principles of reckoning, which is kind of the underlying values that are guiding our intention for these discussions and then how it will happen. And um, this wonderful poster with Audre Lorde, when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard or welcomed, but when we are silent, <clears throat> we are still afraid. So it is better to speak. <laughs> um, and how to register uh, background reading, which is really uh, wonderful, including articles in nursing. Uh, one that was written in published in 2010 in Advances in Nursing Science on Addressing Whiteness in Nursing Education, published in 2010. And the co-author on this is Robin D'Angelo, whose book, uh, White Fragility, has really uh, hit the charts uh, lately. We list several books that are important to look at. Uh, Lucinda is uh, going to be hosting the discussions um, and then uh, Christina Nirati is um, the dean of a school, of, small school of nursing on the Yakima uh, Indian Reservation in the state of Washington. And uh, then I'm involved with it, as you might guess. <laughs> uh, but this is a really uh, exciting initiative, but also this site has a, a lot of information about um, activism um, it, the whole thing started with a manifesto that Richard Cowling and Sue Hagedorn and I wrote way back in 2002 um, to uh, really claim that this is a really good resource if you want to explore the focus of the discipline in some depth. Um, it's really, uh, it's an excellent document and it has just stayed around uh, with kind of sprinkling of attention here and there, but every once in a while it pops up with a really important kind of a, a thing. So I'll stop sharing again. And then we've got another question from Tessa. Um, can you speak more to how the holistic basis of nursing contrast with the medical model of that of physicians or that of physicians generally? Well, you know, there is a trend happening uh, to in medicine to take a more holistic approach, at least um, ideologically. And um, we, we find we all know physicians who are wonderful physicians who really could be nurses <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, but they still, their, all of their education and their background and uh, what you might call training, the term I hate the most, <laughs> to refer to what it is that we, is happening when we learn and take in and absorb something. But anyway, um, the, uh, uh, it's all focused on particular things, uh, diseases, um, and uh, uh, particular uh, parts of the body. <laughs> and uh, so it's very diagnosis oriented, it's very prescriptive oriented. So that means that uh, if you encounter someone who has a background in, in medicine, um, they're likely to start, or any of the real medically oriented fields like uh, counseling sometimes is, uh, tends to be more and more medically oriented in that the first thought that comes to mind is, what's the diagnosis? <laughs> what, what am I li really looking at in terms of the language of my discipline? Um, in psych, you, you're 
are, am I looking at schizophrenia or am, am I looking at bipolar, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. There's always this, this focus on, you know, what is the diagnosis? What is, what can I call this? And we do that in nursing to some extent, but more in nursing, we tend to be focused on the experience. Yes, we know the diagnosis. We know that uh, somebody does, uh, has recently been diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, but our concern now, it, we know how, what the medical treatment is. We know what the routine is. We know what needs to happen. But our concern is helping people move from this moment to the next moment. Um, once the diagnosis and the prescription is given in other fields, then, okay, go, go at it. You're on your own now. <laughs> And the ushering, the, the, the partnering, the being with, uh, to make sure that this happens is really what the foundational focus of our discipline is. I'm not saying that that always happens. I'm not saying that all nurses have it, but you're likely to find it if you encounter a nurse more than you would if you, find, if you encounter somebody with another kind of background. Our concern tends to be what's really going on here and what are people struggling with? What do they need to be able to move from this moment to the next? And can I be with them in some way? I may not be there by their side physically, but how can I support that? And how can I know what their movement is? How are they going to move along? Does that make sense to people? And then Tommy is posting, there is a move button. He's one of our nurse anesthetists. He's in the PhD program. Um, there's a movement in nurse anesthesia to change their name from nurse anesthetist to nurse anesthesiologist. Mm. Thoughts on labeling. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with um, at uh, SUNY Buffalo, I worked with uh, students in the nurse anesthetist program, and they were wonderful. They, of, of all the students in all the programs, the nurse anesthetist students tended to be more, more engaged and interested in nursing theory than a lot of others. That's just been my experience. I wouldn't like that uh, name change, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> you know, I find that interesting because really now, Tommy, you correct me because you're the CRNA here and I'm the PACU nurse, but my understanding is really the origins of anesthesia and the first discipline to administer anesthesia was not physicians, it was nurses. And I believe that holds true like in the Korean War so, you know, to me, I'm kind of like, well, if somebody's going to change their name, the, the physicians need to change their name to physician anesthetist, um, <laughs> as opposed, but am I, am I right on that history? Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> In the United States, the first people to administer anesthesia were nurses and surgeons, you know, handpicked their nurses to be their anesthesia providers. Um, it wasn't until later that it became its own discipline in medicine, you know, anesthesiologists. And I'm not sure if this movement is coming from now that there's, you know, pretty soon DMP is going to be the, um, the you know, base the degree that you get instead of master's or, you know, there will be no more master's in it. So I don't know if that's the movement since there's doctorate prepared nurse anesthetist, but it's funny because the same people that are pushing to change the name from nurse anesthesiologist, there are, you know, physician assistants and they're called anesthesia assistants who are pushing to change their name to anesthetist. And so we're <laughs> fighting that. We don't want them to be called anesthetist. And at the same time, they, one, I don't know, it's very confusing. And I like, I like the fact that we're differentiating because I do think we have a different approach. We have a different training. And as a nurse, I'm going to look at the patient differently, holistically. I don't want to be confused with the physician. Um, so I think that's like the change, the movement, but it is 
gaining a lot of traction and it and, and it's happening all over so it's interesting I can see the the rationale actually but it does it does kind of connect nurses cl more closely with the medical uh, discipline just because of the that name I guess I mean uh, I don't yeah I almost wonder you know we have if in CRNA and a nurse the nurse anesthetist term and role is well established but if I was going to change the name I would almost rather say I mean we have I mean I'm, I'm looking across the screen and we have acute care nurse practitioners practitioners and we have family nurse practitioners and pediatric and neonatal I'd almost rather see the the name go more in the general advanced practice APRN role and be anesthesia nurse practitioners as opposed to trying to link somehow medically, you know. But then again, I, I'm, I'm biased and, you know, I, I have always been the one that as an, uh, at this point, almost 30 year PACU nurse, if I'm traveling and I needed emergency surgery, I would want a CRNA over an MD because I, it's always been my, ex I, I, you know, I just, I, I know with a CRNA, I, I just know I'm going to get that nursing perspective with the anesthesia perspective that is so very important, but that's a great, a great question. Mm -hmm. Barbara Carter was a nurse anesthetist. Patterns of knowing and nursing. <laughs> I didn't realize that. That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm curious, Peggy, how you feel about, because um, I think there's a lot of debate and different colleges use different approaches. You know, I've, I've had heard of some folks in programs that they are required for either their DMP or their PhD, they are required to use a nursing theory. And I loved your discussion about if you're using a non-nursing theory, contextualizing it within a nursing theoretical framework. I'm wondering how you feel about um, what I would almost call transdisciplinary theories, I guess. And I'm thinking Roger's diffusion of innovations. Um, you know, when, when you try to change a habit or change a practice, it, it kind of, you know, the early adopter versus the laggard kind of applies cross-discipline, you know, cross-disciplinary. Um, Donna Beattie and structure, process, and outcome you know, is a foundation for quality performance improvement, uh, you know, regardless of what industry discipline you happen to be in. So I'm wondering what you think about some of more of those, a, you know, transdisciplinary type models and where that fits. Absolutely. And this, they are very useful for us, you know, particularly if you're uh, looking at any kind of process. Uh, and so that needs to be part of a person's theoretical framework. But what, when it gets right down to it, you still are looking at that process in a particular context. And if you're looking at it in terms of nursing and the discipline of nursing, uh, then you have to in some way account for what that situation is. You know, the, they're so broad uh, the, the, the model shit that you're talking about, they're so broad that, you know, they, uh, I think we automatically translate, uh, what is that for my work? <laughs> and so where is your work situated? And what are you, what is the stuff that you're really working with? And if you're a nurse, you're working with nursing type stuff. And what is the um, exact, uh, you know, context in which you're working? So you really need a framework that shows how you might even use the, the large uh, like problem solving process as the overall uh, organizing framework, but then the stuff that goes into one of those kinds of 
phases of change, for example. Uh, how, how are you looking at that? Because you could look at it in so many different ways. You can look at it from a psychological process, from a sociological process, from a uh, any kind, of, and you might even bring some of those into your nursing uh, perspective, but uh, it's, it's bound to be uh, something that is unique to what you are doing. And we do share much of stuff with other disciplines. Go ahead, Slide. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Chen. I'm um, Weirbach, I'm faculty um, at the college and I teach the master's theory course. So this has been very helpful. I'm hoping to be able to use some of this in um, the course design, which I will quickly change that starts on Monday. Um, but I, I cover some non-nursing theories in the course, ones that are most popular, um, some health promotion, some of the change theories, some of those type of theories. And I always have them bring it back to what does this mean for nursing? And where is it, it with it, how does this fit within the nursing meta paradigm and the situation that you're dealing with? And more than, than some of the other things that I have them do, I can literally see light bulbs go off when they talk about it that way. Yes. Because all of a sudden they understand that, oh my gosh, this is what I do. Um, and it's just fascinating to see that when you get them to apply it in that way. So I really appreciate this information that you shared with us today. Yeah. Yes. And you know, um, what you're talking about brings to mind uh, the foundation of a lot of my own work, which is uh, Paulo Freire's uh, uh, theory of liberation from education. And um, it's, it's underlined that much of how we think about emancipatory knowing and nursing. It informed our, our uh, perceptions of what emancipatory knowing is and uh, the, the method that he used uses for his or used for his uh, work um, which was more practice um, education oriented but lots of um, theory un underlying it um, is so pertinent to um, it, it's kind of like when I read Ferry's book it's like light bulbs went off. I understood finally <laughs> some of the issues and the tensions that we experience in nursing in terms of, of actually being an oppressed group or a disadvantaged group or a group that's not dominated by other interests. And so uh, that, that is so very important. We, have, we, can't, um, we can't move into a silo where all we think about is nursing. I honestly don't think there's any danger of that, but <laughs> but that isn't what I'm what we're advocating at all. You know, we're, we're when you um, when you look at uh, say the um, uh, well uh, the theory of peace and power that I uh, developed, um, and uh, it it started out as just a handbook for process, uh, but finally about f five years ago. A colleague of mine, Adeline Falkerfell, developed all those ideas into a theoretical framework that was published. There's a, an article that I can send you the link to. And, but, well, you can look on, on nurseology.net for uh, me as an author of Peace and Power, you'll find it. And that is heavily, heavily influenced by Freire's ideas. But it was translated based on my experiences with nurses and nursing and, and women in other disciplines as well um, on how to move from a, uh, a, uh, a power over or uh, authoritarian kind of process to a uh, cooperative process. And now, I mean, even since I started this work, there's been many, many books that are related and other theories. Uh, shared governance, for example, is a popular idea in nursing um, or in medical and healthcare. Um, and there's a wonderful new book called New Power, uh, which is uh, written by two men who are um, in, um, I, I think, management. I'm not really sure, but it's a fabulous book. And everything in New Power is parallel to Peace and Power. <laughs> so there's a lot of of transdisciplinary interests around all of these kinds of things, but there's certain uh, things that you'll find when you look at their writings in, in the other um, disciplines 
that as nurses, we say at some point as we're going through this, hey, wait a minute, what about this? For example, Freire never saw what he was doing as contributing to health and well being. He saw it as, as a learning liberation uh, tool. And yet, as a nurse, I saw it as essential to our health because there is nothing more stressful and, and uh, unhealthy than to be in a dysfunctional group process where you are uh, disregarded, treated meanly, ignored, <laughs> not respected, uh, and uh, it boils down to our health is, is at jeopardy when we have to do that. So to me, using a group process like Peace and Power is actually a, an intervention for prevention of health problems, but also promotion of good health, feeling as belonging, all of those sorts of things. Well, I will definitely um, look at that more. And um, th this has just been wonderful because it's, it's nice to see that, you know, nursing theory is not dead. and. It's, it's wonderful to have this resource available to help students understand that it's not dead. Um, because the other thing I also see in the course is, because it's a first semester course, so any of you guys that will be in my course, you're gonna, I'll give you a preview. They tend to come in kicking and screaming and not understanding how theory has any impact on, for them at all. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, by the end of the semester, they go out saying, oh my gosh, I use theory every day. <laughs> so, so a little preview for those of you that will be in the course next week, but um, it's, great to, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and a couple of great questions from students. Um, Angela, when I just, your face just happened to pop up on my screen. Do you wanna ask your question? Yeah, I can do that. Um, I was wondering about, um, you know, some of the recent readings that I'm doing for uh, first semester in the PhD program. Um, you know, one of the arguments raised is uh, that something cannot be scientific, considered a scientific discipline uh, if there isn't a broad question to be answered or if there's no ends to that question or no theoretical end to that question. Um, so my question is, you know, a lot of these articles are from the late 90s, early 2000s. Have we, do we have any progress on that? Would we say that we're closer to a unified focus um, or unified pro nursing problem? Oh, I think so, absolutely. And I've thought that for a long time. Um, I think it is a distraction uh, to even begin to claim that we don't have that. Um, it, it's a reflection to me of what I call misogyny. It's the devaluing of our own discipline. And anybody who says that or thinks that does not know what our discipline is about. Um, the, the thing to read about this in terms of my own opinion is my keynote address for Case Western Reserve Conference. Uh, you'll find it listed in the uh, nurseology resources on the sidebar and you'll, you can pull up the manuscript. Uh, because that's really the main thing that I'm challenging. We do know what nursing is. Uh, I, I talk about it in terms of the epistemology, which we've known for a long time. <laughs> it's been consistent over time, and I go through some definitions historically that show us that. Uh, even if you talk to a nurse uh, in practice, uh, you'll find out quite quickly that the nurse, nurses know what, who they are and what they're doing. Our problem is our ontology, being able to live that in the real world and all of the barriers, uh, which Elizabeth Barrett calls the, uh, the thorns on the rose bush. <laughs> um, and I go through a lot of those, but um, uh, when you read that, you'll, uh, I tell about encountering the nurse who was arrested in Utah for refusing to let the police draw blood on her comatose patient. And I had an occasion to talk to her in person, informally in a very pass, in passing in a group. But I asked her when she was talking about the, what, what that experience was, I said, uh, what do you bring to the, that ICU situation as a nurse? That is, you know, your, your role is nursing. And without a moment's hesitation, she said, we are the ones who know the patient. And to me, that sums it up. <laughs> 
It's like that is that is our epistemology. That is what we are concerned about. And of course, all of the ways in which that happens and what we what we are looking for, what 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 is the knowing that we want to come to in knowing the patient is complex and the, many of the theories identify that, but it's just really an important piece for us to acknowledge and to get rid of the myth that we don't know what nursing is. Does that answer your question, Angelo? Um, it does. I'm, you know, I, I, I struggle somewhat because one of my, my major uh, concerns coming into, into the PhD program is that I want to uh, focus on nursing education uh, and some ideas on that, and and whether or not that can fit within the uh, you know the theory of nursing uh, as a practice, right? So that's yes. You know, m much of what we do in nursing really can like peace and power. I use that as my approach to education, um, and in fact, um, we have a an article on the pedagogy that's based on uh, peace and power, but. All education is based on some kind of a theory that is often very related to nursing. Uh, Nell Nodding's work on caring, Nell Nodding's is an educator and her philosophy of education is exquisite. Um, and I think I, well, you'll find her work in my, my I can send you some specific things, uh, but it's just really important. It's an education theory. She's an educator, but it's so, pertinent to nursing and how we, how we, how we conduct ourselves um, in all that we do. And that can apply to patient education. It can apply to, uh, to uh, nursing education itself. Uh, so the phenomenon doesn't have to be limited to education. Uh, people, as nurses, we're concerned with learning and teaching all the time. So most theories that relate to education are pertinent to the practicing arena as well. Patient care. Thank you. And I'm seeing, okay, MJ, K, L, and I am sorry, I see your face. I've seen you all morning and I, and I can't remember your name, but do you want to ask your question? You're muted. Yeah, I go by Julie. It's MJ Climus, but Julie's good. Um, so yes, thank you. Um, I, I really have two major interests really coming into my doctoral degree. One is um, as a, a nurse executive looking at uh, new models of care um, as we we're getting, you know, into a really critical shortage of nurses and we're also having a very uh, chaotic landscape change in our healthcare going to ambulatory. Um, and the other piece of that is my interest as an acute care nurse practitioner dealing with population health and how to set some models there so that we can better address chronic management disease with our population, with our communities. And I'm wondering if you know of any theorist that is helping uh, increase that body of work that would correlate uh, the theoretical framework with uh, uh, the uh, current IHI initiative to maximize uh, uh, nurses to the highest potential of their education and then look at it from a model, new models of care coming out that addresses our current landscape and, and some of the issues we're, we're having to address. Yes, that, that's one of the problems that we have in nursing is that we, we think big even though we're working with something small, right? <laughs> Um, which is part of the challenge. I mean, um, Margaret Newman, when she was alive, and I talked to her several times about her concepts of um, ex health as expanded consciousness, and uh, that, uh, you know, everything, and Anne Fafn Elise will say the same thing about transition. She says, everything is a transition. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of have to, there's, there's so many choices you can make about these big problems. Um, I would su suggest that you spend some time just browsing through the theory gallery on nurseology.net. Um, each these galleries are really quite uh, wonderful. And um, do you want me to take time to demonstrate how to, 
where to find them and how to use them? I've actually been on the site, uh, Dr. Okay. Chen. Okay. So I That's know that fine. there is a lot of theories on population health. Yes. Uh, and then I would just browse through all of them. Just, you know, at least the titles and a little bit about them and see which ones really speak to something, you know, kind of specific within that broad, you know, arena uh, that really uh, would apply. There's so many choices to make it. I know it's frustrating, mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's one of the challenges of getting started with a, a career in academia or in uh, nursing scholarship, uh, you'll never be totally satisfied with the choices you make because you could have made another choice. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, explore broadly, explore widely, and then uh, try to, uh, uh, when something comes, comes across your screen that's uh, not literally, but metaphorically, that really makes you smile, uh, that makes your eyes glitter. Uh, that's something, that's a path to follow. And uh, then uh, take it from there. Because one of the things about all of this is that every theory, every, every person who has a perspective kind of brings a new light uh, because nobody, other people don't think exactly like you do. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use Piaget's uh, experience with, uh, experiment with a little child uh, and uh, um, helping them to, or assessing where their cognitive development is in terms of being able to see somebody else's perspective. So the experiment puts a child on the, seated at a table with a, some cones that represent mountains and they draw a picture of the cones and then eventually they get to the point where they can, with a doll seated in another chair, they can draw a picture of what the doll sees, hmm. <laughs> which is a different picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the same cones, same table, but the picture of the cones seen from that perspective is different. So uh, that's basically what you're going to be doing. You will sit in one chair and you'll be looking at this phenomenon from the perspective that you have but that will inform everybody else seated around the table because they don't see what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? I think this has this just been a great discussion and I think, oh, I, Tessa, did you have, I saw, I saw a hand move, sorry. Okay, all right, I'm saying no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just, you know, even though we've got practice doctorates and research doctorates, I think it's, you know, we have that commonality in that the patient in nursing is, is the focus. And, and I think understanding, even if you're using a non-nursing theory, the need to still put that within a nursing mm -hmm framework um, is just so very, very important. So um, any, any other questions before we close out? I know you guys could probably use a few minutes before you go to your next sessions. Dr. Hooper, there's another question that Dr. Chin may want to, I don't think we touched on this one. Looks like this one came from Julie also. It says, I am sad to see how much energy is being focused on naming the discipline or patients are already very confused about the various roles. What energy is being given to explaining the various layers of nursing? I don't think we've touched on that one. Thank you, Flood. No problem. Yeah, um, you know, the thing is that we can't do it all. Um, and um, there's a lot that we can do to help with the confusion that people in the public have about nursing. And, but one of the things that we can do is to be really clear ourselves, each of us as individuals, who we are, what we are doing, and why we are doing it. Um, and the, um, uh, I actually agree with the, uh, with the point of view that what we call ourselves is not as important as who we, who we are and what we do in our, in our daily lives, how we present ourselves, how we identify ourselves. Um, it's an interesting discussion to have in terms of what we call ourselves, 
I personally love the idea of using nurseology for our discipline, but I'm not one of those like Jackie is saying we just have to, everybody has to change it. <laughs> but it does, it speaks to people. When they hear that term, it's like, oh my God. It's just, I mean, some people just react immediately, oh no. But uh, most of the people that we have talked to, and especially when we first launched the site, and I had these little uh, business cards that had the logo and nurseology on it and the, the website, and we were passing them around at meetings. And most people would look at it and their eye, eyebrows would raise, oh, wow, this is wonderful. <laughs> so, you know, it's not a matter to me of, of arguing or advocating uh, for, we have to have a rationale. We have to tell people how, where to go to find our rationale uh, if, we, if we aren't, you know, for more detail. Uh, but um, uh, language is really more of a tool to use to draw attention. Uh, what we call something is, ends up being quite important um, in terms of using even words like love and hate. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to be really careful about how you use even terms like that. So it's, it's, important, it's an academic exercise that's important uh, that doesn't have necessarily immediate um, influence on what you do. But everybody does, but it's important for you to be clear, to be clear about who you want to be known as. Um, if you are passionate about the, the label you give for that, that's fine. Just be ready to explain it to somebody uh, and don't expect other people to necessarily get on the bandwagon that you're on. <laughs> but, you know, kind of, uh, uh, these are academic exercises that are really informative. Even when, you, even when you hear a justification that is misguided in your uh, opinion, uh, knowing what is causing you to have that re response is more important than anything else. It helps you to clarify your own thinking. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you and I wish I could be there in person in, in a lot of ways. I feel like, you know, when you do this, you don't really learn who people are, but maybe that day will come when we can do that. Well, the next time, if you ever come back to Johnson City, we will, <laughs> okay. we will have an event. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see